He's surely alive and he's living on the inside Rolling like a lion, my God And we've been doing this series on the spirit of fear And 2 Timothy 1, 7 says God has not given us a spirit of fear Amen. But he has given unto us a spirit of power A spirit of love And a sound mind And if you want to be free from a spirit of fear It all branches off from a spirit of love um, love for the Lord your God. Amen. And that's pretty much what I want to preach on today. Love for the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. And of course, then it says you'll love your neighbor as yourself. But your love for God, you know, a lot of people, a lot of times, they can love their, they can love their brother, they can love their friend, right? They can love people, they can be nice to people, right? And all that, because we associate with people. But a lot of them, you know, we really sometimes struggle with our love for God. That's right. But if, yeah, amen. we struggle with our love for God. But if we will love the Lord, amen, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to give us a sound mind. Amen. amen. In other words, we're not going to worry, we're not going to fret, right? Amen. Uh, if we've been diagnosed bipolar, and I know I say this a lot, but I, but it's, it's good. If we've been diagnosed bipolar, or if our friend's been diagnosed bipolar, amen, um, the best way to cure bipolar is to stay on the right pole. You stay on the right pole. You stay on the pole of the Lord Jesus Christ. You stay on the pole of the Word of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. And I heard one person say, well, you're, you're making fun. I'm not making fun. Amen. People who are bipolar can tell that devil to get out. Yeah. Tell that devil to get out. I'm going to stay on the pole. And the pole is the cross of Jesus Christ. And when you stay on the cross of Jesus Christ, amen, hallelujah, you will have a sound mind. Yeah, give the Lord a great big amen for that. Amen. And uh, excuse me if I just preach a little bit here, but if you stay on the cross of Jesus Christ, it will cause the chemicals in your body to operate and function correctly. Amen. Amen. That's called the spirit of power. It'll give you a spirit of power. Amen. Where the chemicals that are released in your body will operate correctly. Amen. And you'll release the right amount of everything you need. Amen. That like the Lord designed it. How many of you know that the devil can bring sickness in your life? Amen. And we know the devil can bring dis-ease in your life, right? Disease in your life. What is disease? It's dis-ease in your life. Amen. And many of the sicknesses that happen today, many of them are stress-related. Wow. Stress-related. Stress will wear you out. Worry will wear you out. Threaten will wear you out. Amen. And if you're like that, you know, and we all go through times and we all go through seasons. Amen. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're at home, you know, and you're a stay-at-home mom, you might be worrying about that husband of yours. Or if you're on the job, you might be worrying about that job. Amen. Amen. Just that job will stress you out. Amen. The world is designed to stress you out, but the Word is designed to bring you peace. It's designed to bring you peace. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. So, um, Acts, you all in Acts chapter 12. And I love this story because it tells a story about a man who's in a very stressful situation, but he's stress-free. He's stress-free. And in verse 1, it says, About that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Now that word vex, that word vex right there, that means the devil wants to dog you out. The devil wants to wear you out. The devil wants to make you tired and work you and wear you out. There's a scripture in the book of Revelation talking about the devil. I think it's in Daniel. It says he will wear out the saints. Don't you know the devil's job? Amen. And he's a good devil. He's a faithful devil. Right? And he's good at what he does. His job is to steal, kill, and destroy and everything he tells you is a lie. Amen. Everything he tells you is a lie. When he, when he throws scripture, he's still lying. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because he's the father of lies. And he is a liar. He quoted scripture to Jesus. And you know what? It was a lie. 
And when he quoted scripture to Jesus, you know what he tried to get him to do? He tried to get him to commit suicide. Can I tell you a thing? Suicide is of the devil. Amen. Cutting your wrist is of the devil. Amen. All that stuff is of the devil. It will not set you free. It will not set you free. All that torment is of the devil. Amen. Boys who think they're girls are of the devil. Boys who walk Amen. around with an effeminate spirit is of the devil. And I want to tell you something about that effeminate gay homosexual spirit. It's violent. It's violent. It might masquerade as one thing, but it's another thing altogether. Amen. And it will snap. Amen. How do you think hap things happen like happened down in Florida? Right? It was a violent spirit. It was a violent homosexual spirit Yuck. that did that. Amen. Amen. So you know what? The Bible says raise up or train up a child in the way they should go. Yes. Amen. And they will not depart. What? You got to train them up. And nowadays, amen, we got a lot of babies in this church. Right. I, I don't just mean like cry babies. I mean baby babies, little babies, little people. Amen. We got a lot of little people in this church. And uh, most of them are like three and under. And you know what we want to do? We want to train them up. We want to train them up. I wouldn't mind, amen, I wouldn't mind starting a daycare one of these days. Amen, if the Lord released it. I wouldn't mind starting a children's school if the Lord would release it. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Why? Because if you can do that, you can train them up in the way they should go. Amen. And, you know, they're teaching all this mess in school now. LGBT. Are you a boy or a girl? Well, I think I'm a boy. Are you sure? That's not training up a child in the way they should go. In the way they should go. If you're training them up in the way they should go, amen, that means you know the way and you're telling them, no, you're a little boy, right? Amen. Don't be wearing no dress. Amen. That's principalities and powers, mics and dominions. Amen. Messing with the school board so they mess with our children. Amen. I believe satanic forces have gotten control of this government. I believe satanic forces have gotten control of our school board. I know they got control of Target. Come on. Yeah, Wells Fargo. I know they got control of them. Right? The NFL, the NBA. Right? Marvel and Disney and all that. Amen. Pressuring our governor, right, not to sign a law that will protect me from, if I said all the stuff I just said, that I wouldn't get thrown in jail. And you wouldn't get thrown in jail. And you have the right to do what you want to do with your business. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let's get to the word. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes you got to preach. Amen. All right, verse 2. And he killed James. Why? He was vexing the church. <coughs> vexing the church. I just got to go there. There's three classes of devils. There's four classes, but you need to know about them. The principalities, the powers, the mites, and dominions. Mites and dominions operate on the ground. They're vexing spirits, right? They're going to wear you out and tire you out and hurt your finances and hurt your health and hurt your family and do everything else. Principalities and powers, amen, they operate in the air. Amen. And what they are is number one, amen, they're doctrines of demons, yeah. right? Uh, LBG is a doctrine, uh, whatever it is, is a doctrine of the devil. That's right. Amen. amen. Hinduism is a doctrine of the devil. Mormonism is a doctrine of the devil. Yeah. Amen. amen. Islam is a doctrine of the devil. Amen. 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 It's all a doctrine of the devil, yeah. right? And when those doctrines get strong enough, they take over territories. Amen. What do you think is happening in Europe right now? Right? They took over our territory. They've taken over Germany. They're taking over England. Amen. And you know what? I've been binding up a recount over in England. Amen. If any of you uh, have been watching the news, you know they, they left the European Union. Amen. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. Thank God. I'm telling you something. I'm not into a one world government. I'm not going to be into a one world government for at least seven years. Amen. Why do you say that, Pastor Greg? Because the tribulation is seven years long. Amen. And the only time we need to have a one world government is when we get the one world dictator. And before the right dictator comes, the wrong dictator is going to come. 
Now our dictator is the Lord. He's the Lord Jesus Christ, right? He's the king. He's the king. And until we get the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, as king, hallelujah, we don't need no one world dictatorship. We don't need a new world order, amen. We don't need an oligarchy, right, where the, where the, where the few rule over the many. We don't need any of that mess, no. What this world needs is the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The new world order has a plan, and I want to tell you something. It is not a godly plan. Amen. It is not a godly plan. So I've been praying against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? I live here. You live here. Amen. The Bible says the restraint will restrain until we're taken out of the way. In other words, that means through your prayers, you have authority on this earth. Yes, right. Amen. You should pray for our president. Pray for him that he does things to bless the church. To bless the church. To bless the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We know he does stuff to bless Islam. Why didn't he bless the church once or twice? Amen. Wow. We got to pray. We got to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. All right. Let's get back to the word. I got I to get this into you. Thank you, Lord God. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the edge of the sword. And now we're there now. Amen. Church is being persecuted like never before. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. He's a man pleaser. Herod was a man pleaser. He's a politician. He proceeded further to take Peter also. And when the days of unleavened bread, amen, in other words, it was festival time, right? It's the days of unleavened bread. In other words, it's Passover. Right? Yeah, Passover, first fruits, and unleavened bread. Amen. Who, when he came, had seen... I'm sorry, I just put my friend in the wrong place. Hey, verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squadrons of soldiers. They knew Peter had some power. Four squadrons of soldiers is a lot of dudes. And to keep him, intending after Easter... Now that word should read Passover. After Passover, Easter is a derivative of Esther, and Esther is like the goddess Diana, and she's a pagan god. Amen. A pagan god. And why is it like that? Because when the Catholic Church went out and witnessed, what they did is they took paganism and they took Christianity and mixed it. That's right. And they brought in Jezebel. And if you want to read about it, it's in uh, Revelation chapter 3. Amen. It's the church of Thyatira. They put up with Jezebel. <coughs> Amen. They put up with Jezebel and they go through the great tribulation. Yes. <laughs> the Lord says, see if I won't throw you into a bed of great tribulation. Amen. Not all the churches get raptured out. Amen. How many of you read the book of Revelation? How many of you read the first three chapters? Amen. If you're going to read, then read at least the first three chapters. Amen. That's to the church. At chapter 4, I believe we're taken out of here. <coughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, the Antichrist is the wickedest dictator that you will never know. Amen. That you will never know. Why? Because before he comes, amen, uh, you get raptured out of here in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you can give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Amen. All right, verse 5. And Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer... Everybody say, but prayer. but prayer. Amen. That means the church did something. Was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Amen. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping. What was he doing? Sleeping. He wasn't worried about dying. He wasn't worried about how he was going to die. He wasn't worried about being released. He wasn't full of anxiety. He wasn't like saying, oh, this is my last day on earth. He wasn't worried about anything. Amen. What was he doing? He was sleeping. He was relaxing. He was a perfect peace. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. 
In other words, Peter is trusting in the Lord. He's not worried about anything. I think this is amazing. If you are worried about this being your last day on earth, believe me, you wouldn't be sleeping. Amen. Amen. But he's not anxious. He's not fretting. There's, he doesn't have a care in this world. Amen. Why? He's trusting in the Lord. Amen. He's trusting in the Lord. And whether he lives or whether he dies, he has no worries. He has no care. Amen. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me not to worry. Help me not to fret. Help me just to trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He was sleeping between two soldiers bound with chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord. We're just going to read this next part because this is amazing. Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Notice the soldiers are still sleeping. Yep. Right? He's chained up between two soldiers. He gets up. Right? There's a bright light that comes in. It was probably so bright. You know, sometimes when people receive the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God gets on strong enough, then you know what happens? They fall out. Yeah. Amen. They fall out. What is that? That's the power of God. Amen. Why didn't these soldiers wake up? Well, the presence of God is upon them. Daniel said when he saw the angel, he fell at his feet. That's right. Under the power of God. Amen. Amen. Verse 7, And behold, the, Lord, the Lord's angel came, and a light shined in the prison, and smote Peter on the side, and said, Arise, up saying, Arise quickly, and the chains fell off his hands. Verse 8, And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and put on thy sandals, and he did. And he said to him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went, he went and followed him, and and wist was not that it was true which was done by the angel who brought who he saw in a vision. That's King James for you. And when they had passed the first and the second ward, they came to the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Could you imagine that? Now there's probably guards at that, but they're probably sleeping too. Yeah. And the gate opens all by itself. Like, and that gate opens up. Amen. God will do a whole bunch of amazing things. Amen. And you thought, you thought the first time you, you saw that was in the spooky movie, right? In the horror movie where the door was open by themselves and all that. Well, they, they must have read Acts chapter 12. Yeah. Right, which opened of their own accord. And they went out and passed through the street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, notice he came to himself, he thinks he's having a dream. He said, surely now I know that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod Amen. and from all the expectation of the Jews. In other words, you in this life, you are going to have trials. You are going to have tribulations. And people, if you really love God and you really stand up for God, they are going to persecute you. They are going to come against you. They are going to attack you. People are going to want to throw you in jail. If you're really standing up for the King of Kings and you're really standing up for the Lord of Lords, all of us in this life will suffer for persecution. Amen. But I'm telling you something. It's not to be sickness and it's not to be deceased. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever step out in faith and you do something for God and all of a sudden, right, your foot pedal don't work no more and then your car breaks down. Amen. And then you get a ticket, right, like that. And all of a sudden everything starts to come against you and you run people here and there and you love them and bless them and all of a sudden your air conditioner goes out and you don't know how to, you're going to get that fixed because it's on a Saturday night nobody's open on Sunday and all of a sudden you say, oh God, why? Oh, God, why? Well, well, praise God, you're in good company. Just join the club. You're saved. You're saved. Amen. 
And how you react to all that determines your inheritance. Aaron gave an awesome testimony on Wednesday night. He said that he was working and he was putting this big giant stick together, you know, to put this piece of machine on it. And it was holding up and the thing fell over and it hit him in the head. And it hit him in the head. He said, oh, golly gee, or something like that, you know, and, and uh, rubbed his head a little bit and went back to work. And his co-worker was standing there listening to him. And he said, man, I can't believe that. Not that the skid hit him in the head. But he said, if that had happened to me, I'd have cussed. I'd have cussed the skid. I'd have cussed the job. I'd have cussed me. I'd have cussed everything. I'd have, <laughs> I'd have cussed up and down. Amen. I'd have been a cussing fool. Amen. And you know what Aaron said? He said, thank God I didn't cuss. Why? Because that was a testimony. A testimony of a transformed life. Glory to God. In other words, he knows Aaron's a Christian. He knows he's a preacher. Amen. And when it really came down to it, he didn't lose his testimony. When things were at the hard spot, he didn't lose his testimony. He kept his testimony. Yeah, I like to tell this story. I was out working, rebuilding the sugar refinery. And I used to have crews come out all the time. And because I worked in the laydown yard, I had to figure out what steel went where to build the building so they could fly it up. And, uh, but they come out all the time. And a lot of times, you know, after about six months, I got to know a lot of them pretty good. You know, and at first they didn't know who I was. And then after a while, they took a notice. They said, you don't cuss, do you? I said, no, I don't. I didn't tell them I was a preacher or a Christian or anything. I let them ask. Amen. I let them ask. You know, because I knew we'd be out there for a while. So anyway, one day I can remember, you know, we're all gathered around and stuff like that. Somebody mentioned something. And another guy said, if I could just get him to cuss one time. You know what I said in my heart? And I said to God, I said, God, don't ever let me cuss. I said, God, I know I can't do it in my own strength. That's when you fail. Amen. When you try to do it in your own strength. I said, God, but give me the grace that I never cuss and I never lose my testimony. And you know, through his grace, I never did. I never did. And one of them, I remember, gave their heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And you know what? Your testimony will go before you. Amen. Amen. If you could, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Now, Romans chapter 8 is one of my all-time favorite chapters in the Bible. You can live off Romans chapter 8. Amen. So when you're in the kingdom, why don't you cuss? Why wasn't Peter worried? Why wasn't he threatening? Amen. Because he saw himself on a different level. He saw himself not as a citizen of this world, but he saw himself as a citizen of heaven. You need to see yourself as a citizen of heaven. You need to see yourself, amen, as a servant of the Most High God. Peter wasn't worried because he saw himself as God saw him. Amen. And he saw him as a servant. Amen. I saw a video. Um, I don't. I don't remember. It was probably on YouTube or something like that. It was a video the other day, but it was a. It was a man. He was a, an Arab man. Amen. And uh, ISIS had got him. He's a Christian. Mm -hmm. And they were getting ready to hang him. He hung. But before they did, they had the noose around his neck, and you could just see the joy of the Lord. Amen. The joy of the Lord radiating off him. Why? He knew he was dying for Jesus Christ. He knew in just a little bit, it would all be over, and he passed the test. And he passed the test. And somebody snapped a snapshot of that, and his testimony went throughout the world. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Amen. How many know the joy of the Lord is your strength? Yeah. Amen. Joy is not happiness. Amen. It will produce happiness. But joy is your strength. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it says, Romans chapter 8, look at verse 11. It said, 11. It said, but if the spirit of him that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwell in you. What do you think this gospel is all about? Dwell in you. He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies by His Spirit 
which dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. We don't live after worry. We don't live after fear. We don't live after backbiting. We don't live after tail bearing. We don't live after coarse jesting. Amen. What? We live after the Spirit. We don't. We are debtors not to live after the flesh. We are to live after the new man. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. For if we live after the flesh, he shall die. But if he, through the Spirit, how do you do it? Through the Spirit, we do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received a spirit of bondage again to fear. To what? To fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. In other words, when you're crying, Abba, Father... When your heart is on Abba Father, when your mind is on Abba Father, when you're clinging to Abba Father, you don't have to fear anything. Amen. You don't have to fear sickness, disease, anything that comes your way, poverty, being broke. You don't have to fear not being able to pay your bills. Amen. Why? Because those change. Notice Peter was chained up, right? And prayer from the church went forward, right? Now, there are different kinds of chains. Oh, it got quiet in here. Right? There's regular chains with fetters and all that. But there's emotional chains. That's right. There's psychological chains. Right? There's lust chains. There's different kinds of chains. And the gospel message is that when you cry, Abba, Father, those chains fall off. Amen. Those worries fall off. Those fears fall off. Amen. Those other desires fall off. It all begins to fall off. Sickness falls off and cancer falls off. It all begins to fall off. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're crying, Abba, Father. And God begins to break those chains. Amen. Things in your past. Don't affect you anymore. Amen. That's right. Hurts in your past. Pains in your past. Things that your parents did or didn't do. Amen. Amen. They're human too. That's right. They got struggles too. That's right. They got changed too. You know when Elijah went running for his life, a spirit of fear came on him. Amen. Because the witch Jezebel said, see if you're not dead by the morning. Right? And you know what? She almost killed him. She didn't use an army. She didn't use a knife. She didn't use a bow or an arrow. Didn't use a gun. She used a spirit of fear. And when the spirit of fear hit Elijah, he went running for his life. And when he went running for his life, he ran so hard and he ran so long, that boy just about ran himself to death. That spirit of fear, if an angel had not interceded for Elijah, the spirit of fear, boy, you ain't listening to me today. The spirit of fear would have killed Elijah. And he said, and God sent him an angel to give him angel food. And he said, why are you giving me this angel food? He says, because the journey is too great for you. Where was he running? He was running back home. He was running back to daddy. What do you mean he was running back to daddy? Yeah, he was running to Mount Horeb. Or he was running to Mount Sinai. They're the same mountain. But it's the mountain where God met Moses and showed up for Moses. It's that mountain he was running to. And when he was in a hard place, when he was in a bad place, God brought up a juniper, juniper tree. Why? To protect him from the heat. Why? He'd have died of a stroke. Because of one word from Jezebel. One word. Man, that's a powerful word from that witch. Almost made the prophet run himself to death. Right? But God. And he said... God, kill me now. Well, if you wanted to die, why don't you stay where you were? Jezebel had done it for you. <laughs> right? Amen. And he said, I am not better than my fathers. You know what? I believe my sons are better than I am. I do. 
Them little things and little foxes that dog me, right? Right? They're not going to dog my son. Amen. They're not going to get my sons. They're not going to get my children. Oh, hello. Thank you. Amen. They're not going to get them. Amen. The things that dog my dad, right? Alcoholism. That's right. All right. That was, that's enough said right there. Right? I, it's, they didn't dog me. Right? Amen. Was I ever an alcoholic? I don't know. I drunk a lot. I smoked a lot of dope. Right? I did a lot of coke. Right? But I got saved. I got saved. And when I got saved, I can remember one time I was talking with my dad, you know? And I said, I said, Dad, I said, uh, you know, I was I was in my early twenties at the time, 21, 22, amen. I, I really gave my heart to Jesus when I was 19. Amen. Now, I prayed the sinner's prayer earlier. I'm not going to get caught up there because that's another story. Amen. But I gave my heart to Jesus. I started serving God in the midst of managing a rock band, living in a, in a warehouse with a bunch of partying dudes. Dudes. We were all just dudes. I wouldn't even call us young men. We were dudes. Right? Going to bars. Right? Around Chicago, you know, doing all these gigs and stuff like that. Okay, that's when I got saved, but I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. And I remember the time I was talking with my dad. I said, Dad, man, you need to you need to really quit smoking and drinking. I mean, just for a little bit, you know. And, and uh, he said, uh, he said, I, I tried, but I can't. I can't do it. I said, I did it, Dad. And I can remember. He looked right in my eyes and said, I know you did, son. I know you did. Amen. See, you can come up out of things. Amen. You can come up. Amen, somebody. God will bring you up. Amen. And God will bring you up. And He will bring you out of things. And you mothers and you grandmothers, you're believing for your kids. Amen. They might be wayward now. They're not going to stay there. Amen. They are coming up and they are coming out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't quit your praying. Don't quit your believing. Don't quit the things you say. Amen. Sometimes you just need to talk to them like they're already saved. Amen. And let the power of God flow in your life. Let the power of God move in your life. Amen. And they'll see it and they'll come to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I believe in camp meeting. I'll tell you what. This is the first time I ever had a revival called a camp meeting. Why? Because we're coming up higher. We're coming up higher. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And I believe this house, amen, is going to be full of young people. Thank you, Lord God. Coming up higher, glory to God. And I want to thank everybody. Really, I want to thank our perpetually young people. <laughs> you know what perpetually young people are, right? People, they've been young a long time. Yeah. All right? Because you were the support that got our kids up to the forward conference. Amen. Amen. Give you all a hand, hand clap of praise for that. Amen. Yes, you were. You were the support. Amen. That got our kids up there. So thank you very much. Amen. In other words, you perpetually young people, you're raising up a generation. You're raising up a generation. And God said, if you raise up a generation, I'll give you a nation. I'll give you a nation. How are you going to take this nation back? You're going to have to take the young people. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. For you have not received the spirit of fear. Again, where our heart cries out the Father. Verse 16. The same the spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are what? The children of God. And if children, then heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. You are a joint heir with the anointed one. And you are a joint heir with his anointing. Amen. Shame on us for not walking in the anointing the way we need to. Amen. You have power in your hands. You have authority in your hands. Lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. Lay hands on a man, cowboy, whose kidneys aren't working. Go ahead, send them back to the doctor. Let the doctor give the report. Amen. And what was the report? You're healed. Amen. You're healed. You don't have any kidney problems. Amen. Glory to God. Why? Because somebody laid hands on him. Amen. What if nobody laid hands on him? You think he got that report? I doubt it. I doubt it. See, you need to see yourself the way Christ sees you. 
And when the Father looks at you, when Christ looks at you, He doesn't see you any different than Jesus. Amen. The only people that see us looking different is us. That's right. Is us. But He doesn't see it. He doesn't. Amen. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. So you're an heir of Christ. If so, that we suffer with Him, we may be also glorified together. Glorified. God wants to give you glory. God wants you to walk in glory. God wants you to have a face like Flint that won't move to the right or move to the left. Amen. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. That's why the devil tries to wear out the saints. Why? Because he knows if he can't wear you out, you're going to manifest the glory of God. Amen. According to this scripture, all creation is rocking and reeling, waiting for you to manifest, waiting for you to become who God's called you to be. It's rocking and it's reeling, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That manifestation comes and is birthed out of your love for the Father, your love for the Word of God. Amen. That love, that love produces the innate power in you that drives out fear. It drives out fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. It's the love that you have for the Father. That love, the love you have for the Word. That's why in John chapter 15, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments and my commandments won't be burdensome. Amen. People who, uh, they had a bad day at work and they want to go out and get them a beer. Come on, don't shout me down. Right? Or they're quitting cigarettes and they have a bad day and they say, man, I just wish I could have a cigarette. No, the commandments are not burdensome. In other words, your love for God. Amen. Your love for God overrides the burden of the lust of the flesh. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I, 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 I'll break it down real easy. Your kids are working your nerves. <laughs> right? And you just want to flesh out on them. Right? They do the same thing over and over again. You tell them over and over again. And they never listen. They just go and do what they want. Right? And you just want to flesh. I, I just be like, you want to cuss them up one side and right down the other, right? <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. You know that. But you don't. Why? Because you love God. Amen. Because you love God. And that love you have for God produces the love for your children. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. That love that you have for God, through it all, thank God, there's a through it all. Amen. Amen. Read John 4, 16 through 21 when you get home. Amen. Mark 12, 30 and 31 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Everything else births off of that commandment. That you would love the Lord your God with all your heart. Your heart is the seat of your emotions. Anybody ever read the Bible because you know you should? You do it out of a moral duty? Or anybody ever come to church because of a moral duty? You do it like when I was Catholic, right? I used to go to Catholic church every Sunday. And I did it out of a moral duty, you know? Um, and I did it out of a moral duty because my parents made me do it. All right? My parents made me go to church. Okay? Thank God they did. Even Catholic church is better than no church. Amen. They love the Lord in the Catholic church. Amen. But we're not, I'm not going to get caught up there. But the point is I did it out of a moral duty. That is the lowest form of relationship. Amen. That's the lowest form of relationship. When you go to church out of a moral duty. You come to church or you read your Bible out of a moral duty. It's the lowest form of relationship. You need to do it because of your love for the Lord. 
In other words, amen, hallelujah. In other words, you do it and it produces in you love for the Lord, okay? My parents made me go to church and it produced in me a love for the Lord. All right, it did. It produced in me a love for the Lord. But now I do it. Now I go to church, not out of a moral duty, but because I love the Lord. Amen. Keep, amen. Keeping the Father's commandments are easy for me, not out of a moral duty. I do it because I love the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Yeah, we have revivals and do what we do because we love the Lord. We bless our brothers and sisters because we love the Lord. Amen. When you love the Lord, loving your fellow man isn't hard. Whether they're saved or whether they're unsaved. Amen. Why? Because when you really love the Lord, you get your emotions involved in loving the Lord. And when your emotions love the Lord, you want to be with the Lord. Amen. Watching the football game isn't important as getting you some juice out of the Word of God. Watching that bat, amen, amen. Watching that basketball game ain't as important as getting you something from the Lord. Amen. Why? Because you have a lust and a desire to spend time with Him, to run after Him. In other words, you got a burden. And when that happens, amen, all of a sudden that panic. And that fear leaves you. Amen. And I'm getting ready to close. In Luke, it says, consider the lilies of the field. Consider the lilies of the field. They don't toil. They don't spin. They don't even work. Yet Solomon, this is in verse 27, 12, Luke 12, 27. Yet Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed as one of these. You know what this tells us? This tells us the plan of the Father. The plan of the Father is to dress you up and show you off better than Solomon. That's the plan of the Father. Amen. He wants you looking good. He wants you looking right, walking right, talking right. Amen. When the Queen of Sheba came to Israel and saw Solomon, and she noticed the excellency and the way they dressed, and the way they carried themselves and the professionality of everything Solomon did when she, she saw him she saw a spirit of excellence yeah. within him that spirit of excellence started in his love and his passion for God when God came to Solomon and he asked him what do you want in a dream he asked him for wisdom to govern the people he asked him for wisdom to do, really, to do the will of the Father. And he said, because you haven't asked for riches, and because you haven't asked for victory over your enemies, right? And because you haven't asked for a long life, he said, I'm going to give you wisdom. And with that wisdom, to love me and seek me, everything else, everything else is going to hinge on that. That's why the Bible says, the fear of the Lord. Let me give you a better definition than it. Fear the Lord. Now we are to fear the Lord. Amen. But it is having a reverent love and respect for God. When you're going through a hard time, right? And you're having your time with the Lord. All right? And I remember one time I was talking to the Lord. And the Lord said, are you praying or complaining? <laughs> And I got a holy hush. <laughs> are you praying or are you complaining? Right? God, hush me up. Right? When you talk to the Lord, talk with respect. Talk with honor. Amen. He's your Father. He's the Lord. Right? Just don't be real with Him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Just don't be real with Him. You need to hush your mouth. You need to hush your mouth. Amen. All right, now, don't raise your hand on this. Anybody ever have one of those discussions with the Lord and when you were done, you knew he was mad at you because you ran your mouth? All right? You need to hush your mouth. He's the Lord and he's for you. And half the time, what you're going through he didn't intend in the first place. <laughs> That's right. 
Right? One thing I learned about, about the Lord is He put the law in motion and He gave you the keys. Uh oh. You the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And that's why the Bible says, Whatsoever things you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven or must already be bound in heaven. Whatsoever things you loose on earth must already be loosed in heaven. In other words, you're the one in authority. You got the power to lock it up. You got the power to let it go. And the, amen. And the first place you got that power is in your own heart and in your own mind. Glory to God. Amen. Paul was chained to the sewer system of Rome. I want to tell you something. It stunk. It stunk. That's a bad day. Right? But yet he said, the word of God is not bound. The word of God is not bound. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God will work for you. If you work the word, that word will work for you. And it will take you out of a hard place. And it will put you in a blessed place. But how you operate in a hard place is going to determine if you get to the blessed place. And how you are when you get there. Amen. 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 God's word will not return void. He's given us the keys. The keys of the word. The keys of the word. Hallelujah. And that's why it says Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed as one of these. I believe God is dressing you up. He's dressing you up. He's putting an anointing on you. He's putting a strength on you. Amen. Don't let the cares and affairs of this life weigh you down. Everybody goes through. Everybody goes through. This life without Christ has mercy on no one. Amen. Amen. It is, it is designed to do one thing. Why? Because the devil gave the key, Adam gave the keys to the devil. Right? And his job is to torment you. And your job, glory to God. That's why you got our family here. Why? Because when you go through, we all go through. Amen. Hallelujah.